All right, gonna head out and try and have a fly around Lake Tanaru. Hey, prop. Uh, checking the windsock. Got a wind blowing up the hill, just a very light two to three knot breeze. So it looks like it's good for a forward launch. So I've checked the airspace and uh, I'm clear up to 8,500 feet AGL. There's Alex climbing up the hill. Yep. Trying to get my concertina bag into the pocket of my paramotor. But the bloody thing doesn't fit. Stuff it. Awkward launching area here, so we've got tall grass, about uh, 30 centimetres high, but a nice little boat track that I can run down. Got power lines down the left side, got a fence and livestock down the right side that I've got to stay away from, and at the end of the field, got tall trees, plus it's a reverse slope. Yeah, that'll help me take off, might be hard for landing. Now I'm clear of the power lines, I can report to the paddock over on my left and avoid the livestock in the paddock on my right. I've got a bit of a view, I can evaluate my options. I want to go for a fly along the lake, but it looks like flying along the coast uh, down towards the park isn't an option. There's not much in the way of landing options, but flying the other way to Yungabara looks nice and clear. There's plenty of landing options going that way. Feels like my drive belt is slipping a little bit again, so I might make this a relatively short flight. My DIY cockpit is coming in really handy on the paramotor. I designed it so I can use it with a paramotor or a paraglider and uh, it's doing really well. Uh, I'm using an altimeter only for this flight, so the altimeter gives me my Q&H, it gives me my GPS altitude, plus it gives me my altitude above the ground. I can't fly under 300 feet above ground levels and it also I've got to stay outside of controlled airspace, which is 8,500 feet above ground level in this area. It gives me lots of room to play with though. God, this is gorgeous. I'm so grateful I can do things like this. Just amazing. I'm getting up into the clouds here. Uh, I need to maintain a bit of clearance from the clouds um, just to make sure aeroplanes don't hit me. But uh, yeah, they, they are just stunning. I'm feeling a bit scared today too. So I uh, don't know why I got the willies. Banging out some light wing overs, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Look at that sunburst in front of me, just stunning. And there's a smoke haze over the entire region. There's obviously some burning off going on somewhere nearby, um, creating sort of a fuzzy effect in this beautiful orange and purple light. To find myself a decent launch site, I went exploring around the area. I went to Atherton Airport and had a chat with the uh, local microlight instructor there. And he said it uh, would be a real bad idea to fly out of there without a VHF radio because there's a lot of helicopter and agricultural traffic coming in and out. Um, so I went hunting around for a paddock um, and uh, the first uh, farmer I came across uh, gave me permission. He was uh, a bit hesitant at first so I sent through my license, sent through the SAFA insurance policies and he was a little bit more open to it. He gave me one off permission to launch out of his paddock. Just coming over the town of Tinaru, there's a little landing site along the foreshore there that I could use if I needed to. And it's just nice to check out the dam. Just past the dam wall, it's all national park. And there's pretty much nothing in the way of landing options that I can see from here. So uh, I don't want to venture over that way. It might be a bit too dangerous. They're pumping a lot of water out of the lake at the moment. It seems to be dropping nearly a meter every day. So apparently there was a power station failure, so they're really cranking the hydro generation from the dam wall and they're pumping out a lot of water to water all the cane and the crops at the moment because it's cane season here. Now for the tricky part, I've got to try and spot that paddock that I took off out of, um, approach it safely. There's the power lines running down one side, uh, stock on the other side. So the approach isn't going to be so simple. It's also a downward slope, so I hope my glide ratio is lower than the downward slope of the, uh, of the paddock. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do S-turns to try and get myself down onto the ground so I don't end up flying into the trees at the end of the paddock. Let's see how we go with the uh, landing approach. I'll, uh, I'll just um, approach slowly, evaluate it, and be ready to power on if it doesn't look like I'm going to make it down. Well, that 
wasn't the perfect landing, but uh, got down safely. I had to come down close to that tree to avoid livestock, which were on the other side of it. Um, I went and said hello to the farmer after the flight, and uh, he was really excited about the flight. So, Gary, really appreciate you letting me use your paddock, mate. And, uh, yeah, I had a bloody great time. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, catch you in the next one.